The Tissot PRX has to be the most popular watch in Tissot's arsenal. So let's find out which one's right for you. Welcome back to Time in the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter. My name is Harrison, as always, and today we are looking at what Tissot PRX is right for you. We have the four most popular models. The green is on my wrist, so full disclaimer, I'm totally biased. I own the green dial, it is my favorite dial, but I'll try and come at this from a subjective point of view. Firstly, what we're going to do is run down all the specs really, really quickly. We're gonna talk about the bracelet, the movement, the, the dimensions of the case, and then we will get into each color and which one's right for you. So let's start with the specs. Firstly, this watch comes in at 40 millimeters in diameter. So for slimmer wrists, it is magical. This watch wears like a dream and I have 6.5 inch wrists. If you are a bigger guy, if you are maybe 7.5, eight inch wrists, then this might look a little bit too small for you. But if you're below that point, it will look fine. It'll look perfect. The thickness of this watch, according to our digital calipers right here, comes in at 10.9 millimeters. So it is a very, very slim watch. And this makes it seem that little bit more dressy, that little bit more Genta inspired without being an extravagant price. If you think of all the other watches that look and feel like this 70s design, you'll think of the Patek Philippe Nautilus, the Vacheron Constantin Overseas, the AP Royal Oak, all of which are extremely pricey. This is affordable. The lug to lug of this watch comes in at 44.6 44 millimeters in diameter, maybe just about under that. So it is quite a compact piece. It also has sapphire crystal glass with anti-reflective coating. Now, this obviously makes this watch a little bit more durable. Now, I wouldn't say this is a sports watch by any means. I would say that it's more dressy, but it still has that durability aspect, which gives me peace of mind. Now we get to the weight of this model. And remember when it comes to the weight, a lot of it comes down to the bracelet. Now this does have a quick release function and you can change the strap to whatever strap you want. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this bracelet. It tapers in really nicely and it is very 70s inspired. When you like sort of reflect it in the light, the light bounces down a link each time. It's just stunning. But anyway, let's get this on the scales. So my Tissot PRX, this has had a couple of links taken out of it, comes in at 131 grams. Tissot's website says it comes in at 141. So 10 grams have been taken away because of the links that I've had removed. So just remember when you're buying this watch, it'll come in at 141 grams. The clasp on the bracelet is a butterfly clasp that links in with that kind of 70s theme. Again, you can see this clasp on the Vacheron Constantin Overseas or the AP Royal Oak. It is very much 70s inspired. And what I will say about this watch or these watches in general, I'm being biased because I own the green one, but they look and feel so much more expensive than they actually are. I mean, this comes in at 465 pounds or 565 pounds. 565? 565. 565 pounds. I mean, regardless of the movement, because the movement's brilliant, we'll get onto that in a second, I feel like I'm holding a lot more than that in my hands. Now we come to the dial detail, then we'll go on to the movement, and then we'll decide which one of these is right for you. So if you want to see the dial detail a bit closer, then head to chismhunter.co.uk because we are official authorized retailers for Tissot watches. And because you are a subscriber to the channel, you get a 10% discount code off selected lines. Use code CHSUB, that is C-H-S-U-B, for 10% off selected lines. Thank you so much for the support, on with the review. The dial on each of these models is a waffle dial with a sunray pattern running through it. Needless to say that these are stunning. Now, the difference between the automatic and the quartz is that the quartz doesn't have that waffle dial. Instead, it just has a plain dial with a sunray pattern running through it. I'm a huge fan of this waffle dial, especially when the watch is 565 pounds. For that amount of detail, normally you have to pay a lot more money. Now, we'll get to the colors in a second because the colors are a big reason why this watch be right for you in different situations. Let's move on to the date window. The date window on each of these models is positioned at three o'clock and it actually has a silver border around the outside so that the date is more visible. The text is in black for the date and the date window is sitting comfortably 
but I would like to see it at six o'clock. You guys know that I'm just a huge fan of six o'clock date windows. I love it. I mean, it didn't stop me from buying this watch. Like I actually bought this watch, but I do have a bit of gripe with it. I just, I think it looked a more appealing, more symmetrical, either without the date window or with the date window at six o'clock. But I would love to know, hear, hear your thoughts on this. Do you think that I'm being difficult? Do you think that I'm being a bit snobby? Let me know in the comments. Let's get further into this dial detail. So the dial is very minimalistic, but something that I love, something that I'm a huge fan of is the PRX logo, the PRX text at the six o'clock mark. It very much is vintage 70s inspired and Drew actually did an edit of a 70s kind of theme song and got the PRX involved in that and it just worked so well. I'll actually, you know what, I'll plug it here. The Tissot logo is of course positioned at the 12 o'clock mark as per, and now we go on to the movement, the Powermatic 80 movement. 80 hours of power. I mean, this is 565 quid. What else do I need to say? This movement is of course an ETA movement. It comes in at 25.6 millimeters in diameter, and has 25 joules. It of course has 80 hours of power and beats at 21,600 VPH. Now that movement is of course absolutely outrageously good, but if you want to see the full review, we're gonna link it up here because that's not what this video is about. Now let's get to one of these. Which one of these is right for you? Now I obviously bought the green dialed PRX. This is my everyday wearer whenever I'm in work. I wouldn't say it is a sporty watch. I wouldn't take this up the hills in Scotland or on the watch vlog with me. It remains my kind of Hustle, hustle watch, let's put it that way. But why did I go for the green? Because it's not normally the color that I would go for. And that's what Drew said to me as well. And it is interesting. I like the green on the Tissot PRX more than 90% of the other watch brands green. Green is not my color, but this green is my color. And sometimes it comes down to the simplicity of actually just liking the color. Apart from the color, I think that this goes with my attire more than the blue would. I quite like being different. I like. I quite like being a bit trendy. And this kind of was the underdog. A lot more people have the blue than, than the green. So that's why I picked the green. Now we move on to the black dial PRX. And I think that this is more understated. I think that this is more discreet. I think that if you don't want to draw any eyes, not saying that this wouldn't draw eyes, but not as many as maybe the green or the blue because they're brighter, then this is the one to go for. I think it remains very, very dressy but it's a lot more understated. It's more of a suit and tie kind of watch rather than a kind of smart casual kind of watch. Now we get to the white dial with gold PVD. Now I have to say, I think this is a more trendy watch. I think this is a more arty watch. I think this is a more outgoing watch and I would place this in the casual category. I would very much see this like I am today, maybe a little more dressed down. This is the kind of watch that I would go for. It definitely draws the eye, it definitely captures attention, but it is very outgoing. It's a very bold statement to make. So if you're bold and feel like that, then yeah, go with that. I mean, my Seamaster 300 meters is the white dial. It's a very bold dial. So I'm not against this. I'm just more for the green. And now we move on to the blue dial, the final dial. It is no doubt, there's no doubt in my mind that blue is the most popular color in the industry at the moment. You've got blue Vacheron overseas, blue Longines Hydra Conquest, blue Tag Heuer Aqua Racers, you name it, there's a blue version of it. Even Drew wants the blue version of the PRX. And that's exactly why I wouldn't want it. <laughs> that's a weird thing. It's weird, isn't it? It's, it's almost as if the crowd goes one way and Harrison's mind says, that's weird, I wanna go the other way. And like, I saw this when I got the Amiga Seamaster white dial. Everyone was like, that's a bit bold. Maybe wouldn't go for that one. And I didn't care. I didn't listen to them. I went against the crowd. So I think blue is great and it's a very popular color. It's just not for me. If you've enjoyed this episode of Time and the Wrist at Chisholm Hunter, please hit this subscribe button. It really, really helps me and I'd really appreciate it. If this has helped you on your watch journey and helped you have a bit of guidance in terms of which PRX is right for you, then I'd really appreciate it if you leave us a comment, follow our Instagram, Chisholm Hunter Watches. We do weekly Q and A's every Friday, so you can ask me whatever you want. We're gonna be doing a live stream really soon as well. So we'll probably see you in the live stream, but until then, see you soon.